Hello and welcome everyone to the VOLF's lunchtime tour with ICON. I'm Charlotte, co-creator of the VOLF. The VOLF is a new virtual ecosystem that brings together museums and galleries to present landmark exhibitions for the first time in extended reality. We are thrilled to present our founding 15 arts institutions united for the first time on one virtual ecosystem, demonstrating unprecedented solidarity as we embark on this new journey into the digital era where the physical and digital coexist closer than ever. For season one, we have invited 15 of the UK leading museums and public art galleries to revive seminal exhibitions from their archives, revisiting these shows virtually for the first time since their original showcase. We'd like to thank our technology partner Vortec Art for facilitating season one of the VOV for hosting our participating institutions and their bespoke galleries on the Vortec platform. Our lunchtime tour series emulates the format of the curator-led tour that we know and love in the physical realm, replicating it for the first time in a truly digital sense. It is an absolute pleasure to speak with curators Eddie Chambers and Melanie Pogok today, where they will be taking us around the world's virtual presentation of Icon's exhibition, Herman Anderson, Reporting Back. Eddie Chambers was born in Wolverhampton, England. He gained his PhD from Goldsmiths College, University of London in 1998 for his study of press and other responses to the work of a new generation of black artists in Britain active during the 1980s. Following periods of teaching at Emory University Atlanta, he joined the Department of Art and Art History at the University of Texas at Austin in January 2010, where he is now a professor teaching classes and seminars relating to art history of the Af African diaspora. His forthcoming book is World South Africa, Writings on Diaspora Art, brings together a range of texts written over the past two decades. In 2021, he will assume the position of Editor-in-Chief of Art Journal. Melanie Pocock joined ICON as curator in January 2020. Together with director Jonathan Watkins, she is responsible for ICON's artistic program of exhibitions, commissions and publications. Prior to ICON, she was assistant curator at the ICA in Singapore, where she organized more than 60 exhibitions with Southeast Asian and international artists. As a writer, she regularly contributes to international publications, including Art Asia, Asia Pacific, Art Monthly, Freeze, The Financial Times, to name but a few. A member of the International Association of Art Critics, she holds an MA with distinction in curating contemporary art from the Royal College of Art. Just a quick note that Zoom slightly reduces the resolution, so feel free to wander around the virtual exhibition yourself after the tour via the link in the chat below. Please also note that an automated transcription is available for this tour provided by Zoom. If you would like to make use of the service, please click the live transcript setting on the control bar at the bottom of the screen to enable auto transcription. As ever, there will be time for questions at the end, so please do pop these into the Q&A tab at the bottom of your screens, and we will get through as many as we can. But for now, I'd like to welcome you warmly to the digital era and hand over to Melanie and Eddie. Thank you so much, Lottie. Thank you, Lottie. Um, and just to say again, thank you so much to the VOLV uh, for hosting uh, this revival of Hervin Anderson's exhibition at ICON in 2013, which was a very important exhibition. And at the time, his most comprehensive exhibition to date. And also, of course, many thanks to Eddie for joining us. And in that exhibition, Eddie played a very key role and contributed a, a wonderful essay to the exhibition alongside critic Jennifer Higgy. Before we delve into the exhibition, uh, I'd like to preface it by saying that this presentation on the VOV draws on the original exhibition. And the original exhibition spanned both floors of Icon's galleries. So here in the VOV, we have a more select presentation of 12 paintings that are presented in a space that simulates Icon's first floor galleries. Um, I wanted to start this tour um, by asking Eddie, uh, firstly, how you first met Hervin, how you first got to know his work, 
and also your memories of the icon exhibition because um, unfortunately I didn't have the privilege of being able to see it in person so I'd love to hear your anecdotes and recollections of it. Sure um, let me let me first say um, that it's a it's an extraordinary honor to be here so um, 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 th this is this is a very special a special experience for me so um, I'd like to extend my sincere thanks to, to you Melanie for for this invitation and also of course to George and Lottie of the the, of the VOV. Um, I think I think um, I probably first met met Herbin. It must have been around about the early two thousands. I mean, it, it was certainly it was certainly quite some time ago. Um, um, and he's always he's always struck me, or he's always been to uh, been to me a kind of a an extraordinary artist. Um, I love. I love his use of paint. I love the ways he paints. I love the scale of his paintings, and I, I love the subject subject matter of his paintings. Um, I think the exhibition um, that was held at Icon in twenty thirteen. I think it was a very special exhibition because, um, well, I mean, for a, a number of reasons, but one of the ones that I will cite is that it's not often that we get an opportunity to look at a focused body of work by by an artist such as Herbin. Too often artists of certain backgrounds, certain ethnicities, certain mm -hmm. racial backgrounds, quote unquote, um, um, they their work is often shoehorned into certain readings in terms of group exhibitions, um, 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 uh, group exhibitions are the sorts of exhibitions in which the work of certain artists tends to have a place. Um, 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 but in so many respects, a solo exhibition allows for work to breathe, allows to work for kind of exist within its own, its own environment. And for audiences, of course, to appreciate the work of an artist when it's shorn of the sometimes clumsy or sometimes kind of overwhelming um, 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 raced ways, um, if we can if we can use that term, um, in which work is work is sometimes placed. Um, I think I think Herbin as one is an artist who has managed to kind of circumvent some of these some of these issues um, 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 throughout his time as a painter, um, but certainly the ability to see um, a standalone exhibition in which, as I mentioned before, the audience, the audience can really appreciate the work on its own merits. They can read individual paintings, um, 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 as I say, outside of the context of Sometimes the ways in which artists are shoehorned um, into certain certain readings or certain contexts. So I think this this to me is one of the major significances of of um, of Herbie, Herbie Anderson's. And of course, um, um, there are so many ways in which the solo exhibition still is the holy grail for for um, for um, um, artists such as Herbie and indeed others. Um, 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 who don't always get the opportunity to have their work work appreciated for its own merits. Mm. And yeah, Eddie, it's it's really interesting to hear you say that because actually in your publication, which I really want to give a shout out to at this early point, because it also makes this talk um, really pertinent. Hervin's artwork actually features on the cover um, and this publication, World is Africa, is a collection of your writings and of course one of these writings is the essay that you, you did for Hervin's exhibition. But I was very aware in reading it that this is one of your key arguments, actually the importance of solo exhibitions for Black British artists like Hervin, like you said, and in many ways so that their work can be understood on its own terms. And I also find it interesting um, that on, on the on the cover we have 
uh, an artwork that in many respects is um, emblematic of his oeuvre, and it's this focus on landscapes. Uh, and if we come into this first um, painting that we see in, in the Volve, um, which is uh, has the title uh, untitled Red Flags. Um, and this painting, I think, brings us into this geography, which uh, again is very recurrent in his work, which seems to allude to somewhere in the Caribbean, indeed, uh, and this is uh, Hervin's uh, descent of his, uh, his parents. Uh, it could well be in Jamaica, where, where they hail from, um, but also it could be uh, equally Trinidad, which I know uh, Hervin spent a lot of time there. And these sorts of landscapes, what I, I find really um, almost like a, a push and pull factor is that whilst we feel so inside them, and I think it's because of this expansiveness, both of the ground, which here is reflected in this yellow beach, which absorbs almost half of the painting, but then equally this um, background of you know, lush greenery, very reminiscent of the tropics, that sort of climate. And even the, the haziness of the figures here, it, it reminds me also of that sensation on a really hot day, you know, when you get this kind of warping of the atmosphere. And this, this sense of atmosphere, you know, that very holistic sense of being in a landscape, not just visual, but also on the body, you know, that sensation I feel is really strong in, in this particular painting. Um, but coming back to this push and pull factor, because it, it's interesting in his work, whilst you feel very absorbed into the landscape, you also still feel distant from it. He kind of maintains both those positions somehow for, for the viewer. Um, and I wondered what your feelings were about this, Eddie, because I, I know you've also talked about this um, a bit in your, your essay, which has the title, Double Consciousness. And I think in many ways that term, which is one that you invented in a way in relation to his work, really brings up this, this dual sentiment. Yeah, well, certainly, certainly, um, I think the th to me, the thing that is most intriguing about Hervin, Hervin's work is that we're never sure exactly what it is we're looking at. Um, uh, the pa his, the paintings, the paintings have secrets um, that, um, that, in some respects, are only unearthed with patient viewing. Mm -hmm. So we need to spend a lot of time. We we need to spend significant time with Hervin's paintings in order to appreciate what it is we're looking at. Of course, one of the first things that I think we we can appreciate about Hervin's work is his use of paint, the ways in which he paints, the ways, the ways in which he renders his landscape paintings or his portraits or the other subject matter that, that he attends to in his work. Um, 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 it's very, he has a very unusual approach to the act of painting. Um, and uh, in some respects, it's incredible to think, to think that, um, this painting dates from 2004 and the exhibition dates from 2013, I think it was, uh, because there's always a freshness about, about Herbin's work. So no matter how, how many times we've looked at one or more paintings or several paintings or entire exhibitions of his work, we can revisit an exhibition. And of course, this is a wonderful opportunity to revisit the exhibition in the, in the virtual realm. Um, but no matter how many times we uh, we we might engage with with Hervin's work, there's always something fresh. Um, uh, th there's always a new experience to be gained from from a new viewing of the work. Um, and I think this uh, this example, I mean, this is a wonderful example to, to start with because, as you as you 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 you, you say, Melanie. Um, we might read it in the first instance as a kind of a landscape, a kind of beach scene. But of course, um, um, once we 
once we get past this initial reading, there is so much more to the painting. There is so much depth in the painting. There are so many signifiers that we're encouraged to explore um, if we approach the work um, with an open mind. This is it's hugely important for us to approach the work with an open mind and to really indulge or ask ourselves this question: What are we looking at? And um, what um, um, what does it mean to for the landscape to be painted in the ways in which it's painted? What does it mean? What are the signifiers of of um, of the beach um, of people on the beach? Um, 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 what what's the significance of this kind of overwhelmingly tropical environment as in, 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 in some respects. There were so many questions that flow from, from um, an open and, and an honest encounter with Hervian's work. Mm. And yes, you're right to point out also that, um, I mean, the fact that it's a beach scene and rather that, that there's this sense of ambiguity as to the tone of it, these signifiers, as you as you mentioned, I mean, I again, I, I'm picking up on the fact that in the title is red flags, and on a beach, typically, if there's a red flag, it indicates that the water is unsafe to go into. So whilst on a surface level, it all looks very joyous and um, almost calm and tranquil, there is also this underlying disquiet. Um, and I, I feel like it's a good point to bring in here as well. Um, the fact that Hervin, he, he was born in Birmingham, of course, and only went to Jamaica with his parents in his teenage years. And so as he was growing up, um, I think in large part, he was fed a quite a romanticized uh, picture of Jamaica um, and the culture from which his parents had come from. And I think that this is very symptomatic as well of a kind of diasporic condition whereby you have this image of the culture from, from whence your parents came to which you know that you also belong in part, but then you, you cannot reconcile that distance by sheer fact of having been born elsewhere. You know, it's... Um, and whilst having that opportunity to go back, I feel no doubt contributes to this very vivid sense of being in this landscape, very possibly in Jamaica or however we want to imagine where this place is. Equally, again, that sense of remove, I think, comes from him being in that irreconcilable space, I suppose. Um, but let me come back to this, this red flag signifier, because I think it's a good segue into the next painting that I wanted to talk with you about, which is from his very well-known Welcome series. Uh, and this one bears the, the title, Some People, um, also from 2004, so around about the same time. Um, and red is, is, a, is a prominent color in this picture. Um, I don't know, again, I'm picking up on this, it, it could be a coincidence, but that, I think there's something in that somehow. Um, and uh, I know that there, there's also some narrative around this series which talks about um, the, these grills. So that this um, pattern that you see in the painting um, refers to the security grills that are very common in, uh, in Jamaica. People have them erected in front of their houses, but also you know, public buildings as a form of security. So it's a deterrent, it's, it's something that separates and demarcates. Um, but equally, they're, they're also, as you can see here, very decorative, you know, that they're also pretty. I mean, they have this um, very uh, rhythmic sort of um, motif. And here it's, um, I find the way that he paints the grill very much um, almost a homage to its inherent aesthetics that, that have this very pleasing sort of decorative quality. But of course, underlying it is again, this um, much more, you could say sinister or um, 
you know, contrary um, association with the security grill. Um, and I know, Eddie, also that you, you've written about um, how on these paintings, as you see at the very top here, the, the word welcome, it, it can appear uh, in this one, it does. Um, and that this is very much an irony because again, whilst I suppose when you um, are invited to someone's home, you know, you pass that threshold of the grill, but um, it doesn't have a very welcoming sort of feeling. <laughs> um, Eddie, do, would you like to talk a bit more about this series? Yeah, sure, sure. Well, you know, it's, uh, I mean, again, you know, it's uh, a wonderful, it's a wonderful body of work in which we see her being, we see perhaps um, things occurring to him in other, in, in other, in other environments. I think um, to be in, to be in an environment where every building, um, every home, every apartment block, so on, um, certainly at um, at uh, at its lower levels in terms of apartment blocks, um, um, to be in spaces in which um, every building is is grilled, in effect. Um, um, mm -hmm. It might not be something that occurs to the visitor immediately, but certainly once it does occur to the visitor, it's quite hard to shake, shake this um, this kind of association between between um, the spaces that people inhabit, and also, of course, businesses and shops and office blocks and so on, um, and the ways in which they they are kind of wrapped in wrapped in these kind of um, these sometimes very kind of ornate grills. Um, um, so uh, this body of work kind of indicates that um, Herbert is using this opportunity to explore issues of not only, not only literal issues of space and uh, who's inside and who's outside, who's kept outside, who's, 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 who's in some respects kept inside, um, um, but also, um, isn't th these paintings opportunity to explore issues around form, um, form and um, uh, and structure? Um, and Herbin does this in a, a compelling way. These are these are, despite the the, the somewhat difficult um, reasons why homes are, are grilled. Um, these are beautiful works, aren't they? These are these are these are uh, th these are works of great beauty um, that draw us in 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 a re in, in a range of ways. Um, we might also ask ourselves this question in some respects: um, um, What's the other side of the grill? What's what are we? What are we? What are we being kept away from? Um, 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 what what can we see if we kind of peer through a section of the grill. Um, um, and of course, in a work like this, um, we're looking at, we, we are looking at a, um, a range of shapes and structures and, 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 uh, and symbols and so on that we can't immediately read. You know, we, we, uh, we have to work quite hard to figure out again, as I mentioned before, in terms of the previous work, what are we looking at? What exactly are we looking at? Um, um, this is a this is a this is a question that recurs time and time again when we look at Herbert Anderson's work. Um, um, uh, I mean, just to uh, um, just to restate, um, 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 their works um, that seem to me to to hold um, hold any number of any number of, of secrets, um, um, some of which we might possibly access through patient reading of the work, but um, um, really in the, um, 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 in the, in the ultimate ex extent, um, 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 the, the, the paintings always withhold as, uh, hold, so the paintings always withhold as much as they, as much as they give us access to, um, so um, there's a wonderful there's a wonderful depth nuance to work to work such as such as this. Um, um, of course, we uh, 
you know, we can apply it to perhaps the previous the previous work um, um, in that um, the works can also be read as explorations of um, who has the right to occupy certain certain spaces. We know in certain parts of the world, um, the beach is not just by the sea. <laughs> it's not just at the edge of the land. Um, beach, um, in many respects, access to access to the beach is is governed by who the um, um, who who is deemed to be worthy or who is deemed to be okay to be allowed onto the onto the beach. Um, these very severe politics of land and access to land is something that I think um, have been very kind of subtly but very very distinctly points to and and I think as you just said Melanie um, in terms of the title of the work um, uh, I mean the, the the previous work um, um, red flags I mean a I mean a red flag is also it, it it's also a kind of a it's a metaphor isn't it it's like um it's like if something is it's it's if, if a, a, a red flag is a kind of a warning or it's it's something that indicates that um something is not is not quite right or there's an element of danger or an element of menace um um and of course we see this in in so many respects kind of transferred into this work into into the title of the work, what welcome series. Um, um, in some respects, what could be more unwelcoming than a grilled window and a grilled door? <laughs> um, 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 so there are certainly very strong um, elements of irony, perhaps in 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 um, in Herving's use of use of um, use of um, the word welcome, um, which is it's a subtle. It's a subtle piece, isn't it? You know, as you say, Melanie. You know, you look at you look at this work. One might not necessarily see in the first instance the word "welcome." You know, um, um, I mean, in some respects, I mean, our eyes are busy, busily engaged in any number of 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 of, um, of um, um, aspects of the exercise of looking. Um, but again, it's only with patient looking, spend enough time with the work that we can start to we can start to uncover some of its secrets and the word welcome, although it's kind of explicit in some respects, it's at the center of the painting, at the top of the painting, in some ways a very, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a conspicuous placing in some, in some respects. But as I say, um, I mean, as you, you say, Melanie, um, 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 there is a subtle aspect in the placing of the word welcome that speaks of an artist who very much knows what they're doing. Mm. I love this word that you're using, secrets, in the painting. And I have to say, you know, looking at this work closely again, that aspect of a almost like a forensic um, gaze, uh, not crisp, you know, not scientific, but certainly almost this sense again of witnessing. I find that quite an interesting dynamic. Um, and the coldness of some of these surfaces I mean, even inside um, elements which you can discern, like to the right of the painting, there's this kind of atrium where there it looks like a very thin pane of, of glass. And equally at the very front beneath the grill, a sort of very reflective cold surface, which is almost accentuating and extending a bit that sense of a, a border into the space. Um, and I, I realize also with these grills, um, how much it confuses the, the depth of field. And this yes, is something so. you, you've really talked about um, so well in your writing about his work. Um, and uh, if actually in this zoomed view, I don't know if you can see, but to the left, I don't, I have no idea what this, um, this, these marks of paint are uh, signifying, again, it, it totally deliberate that it's ambiguous, but it's like a beige sort of figure that's sitting, I say sitting, <laughs> in, inside one of these diamond shapes. And yet, it, well, it's it almost, the suggestion seems to be that it could be sitting on the grill or it could be something inside the space. And the way he's done it is just totally ambiguous. Um, and this is something which uh, 
again, feels so accomplished in his work in that whilst there's so much going on, as you've said, there's so many objects to discern, um, that there is a sense of certain lines of perspective, particularly on the right side, where you have that angle coming into the, the center of, of the painting. And yet, if you look at it from another, I say angle, excuse the pun there slightly, but it feels like it could be totally flat. There's actually no angles. It's just a collection of fragments. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, you know, on a formal level, as you said, the sophistication is, is incredible. Um, and, and as you said, also indicates a painter who knows exactly what he's doing with paint and perspective. And that signifying potential of objects that aren't quite fully formed. You know, it's all part of this, um, I always feel like a visual game, coming back to this idea of secrets where the viewer is encouraged to spend time with the work. I think through all of these different devices, you know. Um, yeah. Coming no, back, it's uh, certainly. Sorry, go, go, go for it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, just just to say say yeah. Melanie, um, 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 or just to just to underscore um, um, some of the points you some of the points you you are making, um, to be able to stand in front of of a Herb and Anderson painting is it's a it's a privileged experience uh, for us. Um, 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 because it's an experience which um, yields results. Um, the longer we stand in front of, of one of his paintings, the more we, we can appreciate so many aspects of, 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 um, of, of the, the, the work in question. Um, um, but, but of course, you know, we spend, spend time in front of a painting, um, um, but we can work away from it and we can come back to it half an hour later or whatever and um the enterprise of looking um is still as intense and is still as as, as fruitful and is still as intriguing as it was last time around so this is this is extraordinary this extraordinary achievement um um and it's an it's an indication of what what paint can do in the in the hands of a very intelligent artist mm. such as herbie Agreed. Um, and just to come back to the, the grill, actually, this grill motif, because um, it leads us very nicely onto the next work, uh, which we're going to talk about. Um, and actually, before we do, uh, we're going to hear a little segment of a tour which Herman Anderson actually gave at ICOM, talking about various works in the, in the exhibition. And here an excerpt where he's introducing this painting, which is called Country Club Chicken Wire. The place I stayed in kind of looked onto this, this, this country club. Um, uh, well, it's called, yeah, it's called Country Club. So it was, um, I've made quite a few but it, again, it was kind of sy symbolic of you know, Trinidad. This idea that it was this place where, on, I think, well, on a, on a Saturday night, some, you know, you would hear this place going, you know, there'd be some kind of party going on, but amongst people I, that I knew while I was there, I didn't know anybody who went. So it was this, seen as this place for, you know, well, for whoever, but no, it just, it had this fence, there's this tennis court and this kind of, this kind of, it was, was kind of just symbolized this, um, yeah, this, this, this place in a way, this, and, the, and this time. Uh, um. So yes, they're here in Herbin's voice, which is really nice to have uh, during this tour too. Mm. Um, and as I, as I was mentioning, so that thinking about the grill motif and how it connects with this painting, we have a different form of uh, grill or um, barrier, which is this chicken wire, um, which has a similar function, you know, I think formally, uh, Again, as you were saying, Eddie, who's inside, who's outside, um, even just a, a formal recognition of what chicken wire is, you know, as a shape, 
Um, I know that Hervin's also talked about this particular painting in the chicken wire shape as like honeycomb, uh, which again has a totally different sort of illusion. Um, and I wonder, I feel also that here, um, the potential politics actually of the spaces that he's representing really comes through and perhaps in a stronger and more explicit way than other works. And this comes back to, I think, your observations, Eddie, about the very first painting and the space of the beach. Um, and uh, in, in Jamaica, um, as we know, uh, really to colonial ends, but even in post-colonial times and in sort of different ways, um, that the land has been exploited, uh, whether more recently, let's say, by tourists. And we might think that the privileged tourist who can afford a holiday to the luxury Caribbean, you know, that is the person occupying the beach, let's say. Um, yes, very much so. Yeah, equally here we have the country club. So the, the place of the privileged elite historically, um, also in Jamaica, um, and a, a space from which so many um, Jamaicans would have been excluded, you know, at a certain point. Um, and I'm just, a, I suppose, uh, really just a, a way of, of asking you, Eddie, with this particular work, because I, I know that this also connects with um, Hope Gardens, the, the painting that's on the cover of World is Africa, it kind of has a similar um, history in terms of a space that um, the, the British colonial regime, you know, sort of cultivated. And, you know, how those spaces figure in, in Herbin's works and, um, and how he keeps returning to them and the politics, I suppose, of, of representing these spaces. Yeah, well, certainly, certainly, um, um, with, with painting, with a painting such as such as this, again, uh, you know, I think it's a wonderful, wonderful entree into into the um, the artist's way of working because the more we live with a painting, the more we live with a painting such as this, or the more it occupies our vision. The more, well, certainly for myself, you know, I find myself, I find myself um, wondering um, um, what the artist's focus, what the, what, what his intentions are. I mean, in some respects, vegetation, foliage, this very kind of lush, rich landscape and the, the ways in which trees and shrubs and plants and so on grow within this, this space. This, um, this is as much a subject uh, for some of his, some of, uh, of, 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 of Herbert Anderson's paintings as are this notion of demarcation of, of um, public and private space. Um, um, I mean, one, one imagines, or I, I imagine that, um, Perhaps the um, hexagonal honeycomb, which is, which, as you mentioned, um, um, honeycomb kind of fencing is kind of overlayered over the, the, the scene once once he is uh, once he is investigated once he has painterly investigated um, um, the the ways in which the plants and the shrubbery and so on. A kind of uh, a kind of growing within this kind of tennis club um, um, space, um, um, but certainly I'm very, very attracted to, very drawn to Hervin's depictions of this kind of um, um, very kind of luscious, um, otherworldly <laughs> um, 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 use of or illustration of plant life. Um, 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 the ways the ways in which he draws attention to that which we we may have we may we may have seen we may have we may have an understanding we may, we may even have an appreciation but he's able to kind of take whatever we whatever we know or whatever we appreciate or whatever about about an environment such as this and he's able to amplify it to to this extraordinary extent um to the point where almost we're almost looking at something 
with fresh eyes with something something that we might not actually have seen seen previously um, such as the such as the skill that Hervin has in terms of the ways in which he renders renders um, 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 his 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 works. So as you say, um, um, or certainly, you know, I mean, uh, we can read these works as being very kind of multi-layered. Um, um, are they about the ways in which a tennis club might exist as a as a as a as a, a private space or or as a zone of privilege? Um, 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 are they about what happens to a to a landscape painting or to a painting once we overlay it with a kind of a, a systematic kind of um, um, grill, um, a kind of hexagonal grill? Um, um, because then, obviously, clearly things are transformed. The grill, the 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 overlaid shape, kind of transforms what we're looking at. Um, there's so many, so much depth to to Herbin's Herbin's work. Uh, that this is this is a wonderful painting, and um, rightly so, kind of um, celebrated as one of one of one of his um, one of his signature works. Although, of course, he has many signature works. No, you're you're very right, and your twelve um, makes me think color. Again, I, I mean, the fact that the red of the tennis court is so vivid, um, of course it doesn't represent, let's say, reality. I think it's kind of like a dirty amber or something when you, these tarmac uh, tennis courts. But um, you know, he, he's had this very emotive use of colour as well. For someone who is also dealing with this um, tension between the objectivity and subjectivity of painting, let's say. Um, and this vividness of color in, in, in that painting contrasts very much, I suppose, with the smaller painting on the right, which is the next one we're, we're gonna talk about. And this is part of a series, um, which in, in this case, the, the specific title is Mrs. S. Cater. The, the series of, of portraits, um, again, I use quotation marks there because they're not of specific people, but almost like an archetype uh, of a portrait. Um, but the reference title is, of course, to Seydou Keita, um, a Malian photographer who's very well known for his portraits, um, studio portraits of people and families, um, which he took in his photography studio in Bamako in the 1950s. And when you talk about this um, series, Eddie, in your essay, you, you also mention a number of uh, black artists who have been very inspired by Seydou Keita. And I, I'm also wondering about this affirmative role in terms of identity that photography can play and whether this also has something to do with that interest, I suppose, in Seydou Keita as a figure. Yeah, yeah. Um... Well, certainly, Melanie. In terms of, um, I mean, uh, you know, again, I mean, if we just if we just think briefly about the two works we've looked at, we we can see the ways in which Herman Anderson is extraordinarily skilled at drawing attention to the figure. So, what would that first painting, Red Flag? What would it have looked like if the beach had been empty? Similarly, mm -hmm. in terms of. Um, the members club, uh, the last painting we looked at, what would it be looked at? So, sorry, what would it look like if we're looking at it and we are seeing people playing tennis? So the ways in which, the ways in which um, Herbin plays with absence and presence of the figure and the ways in which the absence or the present stim presence stimulates no end of, no end of, um, 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 Re readings of these of these works. This is extraordinary, and of course, um, um, this is this is one example from the exhibition, in which, in some respects, the figure is the figure is central. The figure is very consciously central to to our reading of the painting. But of course, it's central in in ways that um, again. Um, 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 there is much which is which is withheld. This is not a literal interpretation of of um, of a kind of, 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 of one of Seydou Keita's paintings. 
this is a this is a much more kind of painterly investigation. Um, what one thing I one thing I that I really like about this series is that it's it creates a dialogue. I think I probably tried to say this in the in my text, uh, but it creates a dialogue with um, studio portraits um, of the African diaspora. You know, so we think about we think about migrants of the um, what's now referred to as the Windrush a, a, a generation, um, um, uh, and we think we think about the ways in which they visualize themselves by going to Lo local studio studios and having their photographs taken and even even now all these all these years later there's still these photographs by and large exist within private spaces of course there are a few that have made their way into 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 books and and uh, into and print or so on but by and large um these images um 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 have not really made it into the into any kind of wide public realm. Um, of course, Sadu Keita's photographs were in some respects fairly similar because it was only it was only relatively recently that they've made this transition from studio portrait within people's homes to uh, to the status of of art images. Um, mm -hmm. This is a relatively recent transition. Um, um, but the ways in which Herb Anderson um, takes um, takes these takes a photograph and um, 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 and in so many ways has fun with it. So that, you know, there's a, there's an enjoyment of of, of what of, of what he's doing with the with with the, with the image by kind of um, adding adding these shapes and patterns and and and, and so on um, um, to the painting to to the point where the the original image, the original subject, is not so much obscured. This is that's, this is not what's happened. This is not really what's happening. There's not obscuring of the figure, um, um, but there is a profound um, embellishment of the figure. Um, um, so looking at the looking at this this portrait, um, we have to bring into the act of looking so many other other um, other um, um, understandings and 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 appreciations. Um, um, uh, um, so yeah, um, um, I like the ways in which the painting uh, the painting is in dialogue with other renderings of portraiture. Mm. And your your point about I mean the focus on the figure here is um, so pertinent because. You know, until you said actually, oh, you know, on the beach, what if there weren't any figures? And equally in the tennis court, you know, it suggests um, the presence of bodies, but they are absent. And here, as you were talking, I was sort of wondering, oh, what if we thought of this portrait um, of sorts as a kind of landscape of the body? Um, and I feel this particularly because of the way he extends these motifs on the dress that this lady is wearing kind of into what could be wallpaper, but almost feel like floating forms in air. You know, it's um, it's very atmospheric and it feels like that the body is melding into its surroundings and that the surroundings are also all contributing to this image of this figure. Um, even the TV to the right side of the figure um, and uh, I know that a lot of um, or at least in this work I think that the dress and um, the kinds of things we're seeing are of more the 60s and 70s you know that kind of um, box tv let's say crt tv um, and at the time of course culturally they were very much status symbols it was like if you had a tv I mean, at that size, it's a pretty big one. It's probably like the equivalent of what would be a huge flat screen, that, you know, in someone's home today, a kind of trophy object. And certainly, and we, you know, we might well assume for someone from this background, something to be very proud of. So um, yeah, that aspect of landscape is important. I am conscious of time. Um, and I know we, we don't have a huge amount of time left. So I'm wondering, I know that we wanted to talk about more works, but equally, I, I don't want to neglect questions that we might have. So um, can we come to the VOV and, and ask for questions? 
Um, of course. Yeah. We have quite a few already. Um, right. I didn't want to stop you, sorry, it was so interesting. Um, thank you both very, very much. Um, I really, really enjoyed that. One of the first questions I think we should get started with um, is from someone in reference to the grill of paintings, which I know you spoke a lot about, um, and the severe politics of land and access to land. Um, and they were wondering if you know whether Hervin paints the scenes first and then the grills over the scenes as it strikes this person that if that's the case, the process seems very significant as it involves Hervin physically blocking off the space to the viewer. Yeah, the, the... Go, sorry, I'll let Eddie go first and I'll share my, my insight. Thanks, Melanie. Thank you for uh, for the, um, uh, um, just to say. You know, I think that's a I think that's a great question. I don't know if I can <laughs> if I can um, 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 if I can add anything to the question because I think I think um, I think the ways in which the question has been framed is 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 very much on point and very pertinent. Um, um, I too wondered the same thing, you know, I mean, I, I don't know the answer, uh, but I wonder the same thing. I wonder, I wonder what happens when um, um, a, a scene is richly painted and then then there's a grill or there's there's a fence which is which is applied on top of the of the of the of the, of the, the scene. What what, hap what happens when an artist such as Herbie, Herbie Anderson does this? Um, um, what what is what what is transformed? What is what is blocked off? What is what is um, with uh, what is subsequently withheld? Um, so yeah, I think the questioner the questioner um, is very much on point with that question. You, you're going to say, Melanie, I'm sorry for interrupting you or to speak. Not at all. Not at all. Um, I was only going to add that. Um, I know, well, I understand that Hervin's process, um, as in the source material he works from, is often from multiple photographs um, and fairly small, in that uh, part of his process involves scaling up you know, different aspects of the photographs. Um, and I think that's also why, in a lot of his works, we get looking sensibly a singular landscape it feels like it's made up of multiple visions you know and I think it does come from that um so I don't think that really answers the question though about the uh the order of the the application of layers and the grills um but I think somewhere in there is also this um uh, a process whereby layers are thought about you know in advance and sort of applied in such a way um, that feels relevant to the question. Interesting. And I think there's um, another question on these, um, the chicken wire and the bars and some people as well, um, asking what other aesthetic ways do you think highlight that restriction of access into the scene for the viewer? Um, and this person suggests perhaps the anonymized figures in the scenes. Mm. Mm. Um, and then moving on to a question on curation. And then after this one, I think maybe, well, I'll have to um, cut there. But um, this person asks, was it interesting to curate the same exhibition in a virtual version of the same room? And what process did you use to choose the artworks this time around? Mm. Um, yes, well, I mean, certainly it's um, in, in many respects, we had to consider the Volv as a entirely new and different space, you know. Um, and I think all of the talk around um, virtual platforms alongside or versus physical real life spaces um, necessitates that kind of thinking. You know, it, it really isn't an equivalent. Um, and I think also given, because I know, for example, in the original exhibition, there was some of Hervin's paintings from his very well-known barbershop series, um, which we couldn't include. And I think, of course, what you do sense here is an emphasis on landscape, I, I would say, as well. Um, and in large part, most of the works in uh, this zone reflect what was on the first floor in 
these different locations bar I'd say a handful maybe you know four or five or so paintings so um, we really did try and work with what was originally on the first floor um, but being very aware that we we had to be a little more filtered that wording feels appropriate given how we've talked about Hervin's work but um, yeah about about what we chose to focus on and I think having these really emblematic works as Eddie pointed out like the country club chicken wire uh, you know, work from the Welcome series, very early work from the Welcome series, where the motif of the grill is so prominent, felt very important as entry points, I think, for people um, navigating this exhibition and uh, and as, as an entry point to Hervin's work in general. Completely. Well, thank you both so much. Um, this has been really, really amazing to speak with you both. Um, and thank you all everyone else for joining us today. Um, I encourage you to please sign up to our website to stay up to date with our collateral program as there is lots more from lunchtime tours with galleries, directors and curators like this one um, to interactive workshops with artists. And I'd also like to take this opportunity to reiterate the Bob's core mission, which is to support our cultural sector during this critical time and beyond by employing a novel micro philanthropic model that pulls together donations from the public and distributes them equally between all participating institutions, reinforcing our ethos of unity while strengthening the sector as a whole. And there is a link in the chat to take you to donate whatever you are able to. It has been such a pleasure to have you here with us today. And let's continue the conversation on socials at the Bob Art. And we look forward to seeing you all again soon. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thank you so much. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks, Melanie. Thank you so much. That was wonderful. Thank you. Likewise.